Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Vanity Code, Dwyer Boxing News, one word. On iTunes, Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, after Janady Golovkin destroyed Marco Antonio Rubio, and Let's remember, Rubio was a 16 to 1 underdog. I came online and I made a video where I talked about how I thought Janady Golovkin was overrated. That Janady Golovkin reminded me of Big George Foreman and Iron Mike Tyson in terms of this aura of invincibility. A guy who's knocking out most of his opponents and who's doing it in spectacular fashion early. How, you know, Big George Foreman ended up on the canvas, counted out against Ali. How Mike Tyson ended up on the canvas, counted out against Buster Douglas. How I expected Janady Golovkin to ultimately suffer the same fate. In other words, I believe when Golovkin loses, it's not going to be a photo finish. He's either going to be knocked out like Big George Foreman and Mike Tyson, right? Goliath falls from the mountain in boxing, or he's going to be completely dominated in the ring, lose a wide decision by, let's say, at least three, four rounds. Have it such that going into the latter part of the championship rounds, fans will understand that he's about to lose unless something dramatic happens, right? The kind of fight where a slugger looks limited kind of like the last couple of rounds Mike Tyson against the Vander Holyfield the first fight now interestingly enough I got a lot of comments to that video right a lot of you believe that Golovkin is some new dynamic he's some new paradigm right he's unbeatable but what really upset people and it was an eye-opener for me was when I suggested that a guy who I believe right now holds a belt at 154 right who right now right has already beaten guys who have outweighed him by a lot in the ring right Floyd Mayweather look at the weight gap between Floyd and Victor Ortiz when they fought look at the weight gap between Floyd and Marcus Maidana when they fought. People were upset that I even suggested that Floyd Mayweather might be able to beat Janady Golovkin. In fact, I think Floyd beats him. Right? One earnest subscriber actually in the comment section wrote, Dwyer, I have to give you a failing grade because of your belief that Floyd can beat Janady Golovkin. Now understand, you heard George Groves who sparred with Golovkin, right? He's not speculating about Golovkin, he's actually seen Golovkin in the ring. You heard George Groves talk about how Golovkin isn't big for a middleweight. Understand a big middleweight is someone like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. when he was a middleweight. Right? Look at Marco Antonio Barrera's, excuse me, Marco Antonio Rubio's weight on fight night. Right? Those are big middleweights. <coughs> Golovkin isn't that big for middleweight. In fact, Golovkin has already offered to fight Floyd at 154. Right? My point briefly with regard to Mayweather is that Mayweather can lead with power shots. Right? There's no tell on Mayweather's punches. You don't know if Mayweather's throwing a left or a right. Right? Mayweather is exceedingly accurate. He's one of the most accurate punchers in the sport. Look at the CompuBox numbers. Look at his land ratio against Robert Guerrero, against Marcus Maidana. Right? Mayweather can deal with a lot of ammo coming back 
can maintain his composure and actually land at a high percentage. More importantly, Mayweather doesn't get enough credit for being one of the best body punchers in the sport of boxing. Right? Mayweather's left hook to the body is one of the best body shots in the sport. And the reason it's so devastating is you don't know if Mayweather's throwing that left hook up top or if he's throwing it to the body. Look at the problem that left hook gave. Even a great fighter like Marquez. Right? Also, Mayweather is shorter than Gennady Golovkin. He can fight lower, too. Right? Golovkin's pretty upright. Mayweather can bend a bit. Right? Golovkin had a problem with <coughs> a diminished Kasim Uma. Now, somebody else wrote me and said, do your homework. Know the diminished state that Gennady Golovkin was in before that fight. Right? Golovkin supporters want you to believe that Golovkin was run down before he fought Kasim Uma. Now understand, being run down might impact your stamina. Right? You're not as in as good physical condition as you would have been if you went through camp. But the big hole in that Uma fight isn't a conditioning hole. It's a technical hole. Right? Understand, Golovkin has to be on his front foot in that fight because he doesn't have the back foot game. Understand that when Uma starts hitting him in the body, Golovkin has to return, fire with fire, because he doesn't have a turn, spin, clutch, you know, clinch game. He can't slow down the pacing. Well, forget Mayweather for a second. Let's talk about another fighter that I think is even better suited to compete against Gennady Golovkin, not tomorrow, but today. Right? Understand, styles make fights. I know this guy just lost, but the guy he lost to was perfectly suited for his style. I don't believe Gennady Golovkin is. So before I name him, let's just talk about what I believe the challenges are to Gennady Golovkin. First, the back foot. Right? You don't see Golovkin on his back foot. He's a front foot guy. He might be cautious in setting it up, but he's a hunter. He's not the hunted. Right? So a guy who can get Golovkin on his heels, who has a certain explosiveness to get inside, <coughs> could give Golovkin problems. How do we know that Golovkin against a hyper-aggressive guy who can get in his envelope, who can get deep inside the pocket, is still Gennady Golovkin? Let's talk about another problem. You know, Golovkin does well against guys his size or taller, right? Marco Antonio Rubio, for example. Ishida, right? What happens when a guy is shorter than Golovkin and actually has an inside game. So much so that in the fight he just lost, his opponent was criticized for excessive holding. Right? You have to get this guy away from you. He's inside. He's causing problems. How do you do it? If, and isn't this a question on Golovkin, you don't know how to clinch that well. You're not accustomed to tying up a guy inside. In fact, your inside game is a bit uncharted. Maybe it's there, but it's uncharted waters. People haven't had to see you use an inside game because most of your fights are ending in the first six rounds. Dare I say, even earlier than that. Right? So a guy who can bounce, right, who's going to disrupt the spacing 
and who can get inside and get underneath Golovkin's construct, I believe would give Golovkin problems. Understand too, Golovkin is excellent. You'll notice it in the Rubio film. He's excellent in quietly stepping toward you, right up at the side, in lulls in the action, right? He doesn't just walk up to you. He chooses an entry point. But as you're moving away, he quietly moves up on you and cuts off the ring. <coughs> well, what happens if his opponent has above average foot speed and is more of a bouncer? Right, is bouncing in the ring. You can't gauge where the opponent's going to be. It's not as simple as just walking up to him. Right, let's put a thought in the heads of the people who make fights. The matchmakers, the managers. A fight I'd like to see is Janady Golovkin against Showtime, Sean Porter. Right? Look into Porter's history. Before you say that Porter is too small, understand that Porter used to be a middleweight. Look at Porter's history. Porter used to be a guy who fought in the 160s. Understand, 147 is what's new to Porter. Right? Porter is actually a bigger man. Don't confuse height with bigness right Porter has thick thighs Porter has a thick back right Porter's a thick dude Porter's a big dude right understand too Cal Brook was able to tie up Porter what's the Janady Golovkin fight where you've seen Golovkin tie up a guy who comes inside and is letting his hands go. Right? You've seen Golovkin against tall. Have you seen Golovkin against small? Right? But small with the ability to bend. I'm not talking about Curtis Stevens who fights upright and views himself as a power puncher. Understand, Curtis Stevens before he fought Golovkin, fought Andre Durrell. Could hardly move. Looked like his feet were in cement. Sean Porter's not Curtis Stevens. Sean Porter has above average foot speed. Right? What happened when Evander Holofield decided he wanted to fight inside on Mike Tyson? What happened when Holifield decided he wanted to put his head right here, up on Tyson's chest, up on his collarbone? I'll tell you what happened. Tyson felt he was being headbutted. Tyson's space was intruded. He couldn't handle having a body on him. He fell apart. What I want you to do is to revisit the Devin Alexander, Sean Porter fight. Right, Porter comes inside on Devin Alexander, who has much faster hands, folks, much faster hands than Janady Golovkin. Devin couldn't handle Porter coming inside on him. Look at Porter against Paulie Malinaji. Malinaji has above average foot speed. Look how inside Porter gets on Paulie Malinaji. Understand Kel Brook. Kell Brook might look calm in the ring. He has above average foot speed. Right? Janady Golovkin. If Big Sean Porter is able to fight small, you know what I mean, bend at the waist, come in at angles, come in unexpectedly, off beat, off rhythm. If he's able to fight small and he's ducking, and he's jumping in, and he's inside on Janady Golovkin like he was inside 
on Devin Alexander. How do we know what's going to happen? Right, because wouldn't Porter be Kasim Uma plus? Right, didn't Uma make it to the 10th round against Golovkin? Look at Uma throwing body shots and uppercuts to the body. Wasn't Golovkin's answer to return fire? Now, I know there are some of you who will say, hey, Dwyer, you're talking about a fight that took place a while ago, right? Wasn't it like 2011 or something like that? Well, what's the fight since then that has convinced you that Golovkin's response wouldn't be the same? What's the fight since then where you thought, oh, wow, I see Golovkin has added the ability to hide his body <coughs> to his game? Golovkin doesn't hide his body. He's pretty upright. He's pretty predictable. He's pretty front foot heavy. You know what they say, how do you beat a bully? You punch him in the mouth. Right? Stylistically. I'm just here to say, there are guys out there who could give him a hard time. Understand, I know they say a good big man beats a good little man. Fair enough. But that big man has to have the technique. Everything else has to be equal apart from size. Right? Golovkin, can we agree, is not as good defensively as Floyd Mayweather. Can we agree that Mayweather has fought bigger guys? Look at Canelo. Mayweather's fought bigger guys and has dominated. In other words, you know, there was outrage when one judge had that Canelo fight even. Right? Floyd won that fight by several rounds. Hasn't Floyd made a career of beating bigger guys? Let's talk about Sean Porter. Ignoring the punch for a second. Right, just breaking down the different parts of their games. Can we agree that Sean Porter is better inside and can fight lower than Janady Golovkin? Can we agree that if you're fighting Sean Porter, you're going to have to find a way <coughs> to tie him up? to do the kind of things we haven't seen Janady Golovkin do in a match. Understand who gives Sean Porter problems. It's guys like Julio Diaz, <coughs> who was a technician in the ring, right? Diaz went the distance with Porter and got a draw with Porter the first time they fought. At a minimum, that's a competitive fight. Understand it's guys like Kel Brook, hand speed, short punches, combinations. Have we ever seen Porter lose to a guy who's a big puncher, who really is flat-footed, coming forward and swinging for the fences? To the promoters, to the managers, to the fighters, let me just say, Take a look at Sean Porter against Janady Golovkin. Golovkin's offered to fight Mayweather at 154. Have him offer to fight Porter at 154. Right? As I said before, don't confuse Porter with a small fighter. He's not. If you look at him in the ring with Paulie Malinaji, he's much bigger than Paulie Malinaji. Much bigger. Porter is a big man. I think Golovkin can be smothered. I think Porter might be able to do it. Add Porter to the list of guys I feel who would give Golovkin, style-wise, all he can handle. Let me also point out, too, that there's another way to give Golovkin problems. 
and that's with a jab from distance. It'd be interesting to see. Golovkin against his former sparring partner, George Groves. But Groves, who likes to get involved in shootouts, Groves has some Amir Khan in him, doesn't he? Right? Groves doesn't like to fight the kind of fight that got him the win against James DeGale. Right? Groves would have to be on his horse, moving, sticking and moving against Golovkin. Just understand, though, that if Groves faced Golovkin at 168, Golovkin would be only one of two punchers in the ring. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.